Tonight on LCS, reports of a 17-year-old breaking into the league with 100 thieves, all are returns from military service, and reigning MVP Jojo Pion reunites with his fellow Canadian Vulcan on Cloud9. Good evening. I'm Barento Raz Mohammed. Joining me is Emily Rand, and welcome to the LCS Waiting Room. Our top story tonight. In a shocking turn of events, after eight years on the LCS broadcast, Marcus Jared Zimmerman has officially been elected as our new boss. His campaign promises include a live patch mandate, cutting transition times, and leaving the dive. When he asked if he was sad to leave the lounge behind, this self-described corporate slug said he was evaluating many options and declined to comment. Now here's Jat with sports. So as you can see, uh, I'm being told that we do not have time to talk about golf, so let's bring up the standings for the LCS. As you can see, uh, in the standings, everybody's zero and zero, but 100 Thieves alphabetically is rank one. So that's gonna be it for sports. Now it's time to toss to weather. Take it away, Heather. What's up, everybody? Heather Zahn's here. I wanted to give you the weather forecast for Los Angeles, and you're probably thinking, Heather, there's no weather in Los Angeles. That's why we live in Los Angeles. Well, unfortunately, according to our forecast, that's not going to be the case for the opening weekend of the LCS. Unfortunately, it comes in, it starts Saturday morning, and then lasts pretty much all day Saturday night, light rain, and then Sunday, all day, and then as we get later into Sunday night into Monday, the rain gets a little bit heavier, but still enjoy the show. I'm very happy that LCS is back, and on weekends, enjoy. All right, shout out to Heather for the randomest weather channel LCS yeah. I've ever seen. That was great. It was so cool when I saw that uh, on Twitter X or whatever a couple days ago. Well, yeah. you're watching the weather channel as you do every morning. Yeah, yeah right. Every morning. Do channel. I don't use my phone at all. I always watch no, the weather channel. I, I used to watch the, Heather, the Weather Channel a lot back in Canada because I was like, I need to know if I need to go early, <laughs> if I'm going to miss the bus, if it's yeah. snowing a lot. Back in the 40s when you were growing up. <laughs> yeah, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> yeah, uh, but He hides it well. You look yeah, good for your age. You look Thank great, Rez. I appreciate it. I'm 70. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. There's going to be a lot to talk about throughout this waiting room and throughout this LCS split. But first, Kobe takes us through an oversimplified version of the Season 14 changes. Kobe here with LCS Oversimplified Season 2024 Edition. Things on Summoner's Rift look a lot different this year. To allow top laners to duke it out in peace, top lane now has protection for red side with a thicker wall set further back from the lane. And they've changed the line brush to a tiny pixel brush in the middle of a much wider river entrance. Moving down the river, they've deleted the old pixel brush and widened the entrances to river from blue side, while breaking up the previous blue buff wall, making it easier to stay out of vision on your way from mid to top, or top to mid. Baron Pit now houses a complete zoo of void monsters, starting with void grubs. Every 12 seconds in combat, void grubs will spawn void mites, which are worth one gold but zero experience. And if you kill five of the six void grubs, then you too will be able to spawn some void mites when you're attacking towers. Or if you kill all six, you'll be able to spawn two. At 14 minutes, the new Drift Herald spawns. Get it? Because you can drive it now. And you should drive it. The charge does more damage and spawns Void Mites on crash. Plus, it ejects you to safety with a shield. At 20 minutes, one of three new Barons will spawn and change the terrain of the pit. Hunting Baron calls down lightning that does 15% of your current HP, so you should actually dodge this one. All Seeing Baron creates those long walls and shoots out rifts. They do 150 damage and more if you stand in them, so don't. Territorial Baron has a little baby wall and grabs you in a cone, but barely does any damage, only 75, and it has a delay, so whatever. Baron Spawn also has an effect on blue and red buff. There are now three different versions of blue and red buff. First, regular buff, you kill it, you get it. Second, once the elemental rift is decided, second dragon has been killed. If you kill the buff, jungler plus one person gets it. Then, at 20 minutes, blue and red both get void powers, and if you kill a buff, then your whole team will get it. Back to the rest of the map. Mid lane got a lot wider with the river brush on each side getting moved back so you can see junglers coming and the side access path got tweaked so people now can't pass through without taking tower shots. Heading down to Dragon, things look a lot similar to Baron Pit with a longer wall and a convenient way to bypass Scuttle Crab vision while traveling between lanes. Red side got blown wide open with an attempt to make it more closely resemble blue side with access to a tri brush of its own from the wider river mouth and the same pixel brush as top side. And finally, bottom lane. Access to Gromp is easier for counter jungling and watch out because enemies can come from behind your tower now. Oh, and there are a ton of item changes with no more mythics. Have fun. So there's a lot to talk about for me. 
that he's t sort of hit on was the terrain changes. Yeah. There's a bunch of terrain changes that hit, I guess, junglers a lot. Uh, new bushes that make it easier to ward out for ganks. And different barons. So, like, that, the different barons part actually is a lot more exciting because now the terrain change is based off of, like, once 20 minutes hits. It's, I think it's RNG, right, on which baron actually yeah. spawns. Mm -hmm. So uh, that has been a lot more fun to discover. Have you noticed a difference in the way the different barons actually change the game? No. Because in the games I've played, it's just uh, it's barren. And I mean, they have a different ability, but really you yeah. kind of just dodge the stuff on the ground and it's yeah. all the same. Like, uh, I think the biggest difference really is just the one that's like the hallway baron or whatever yeah. you want to call sure, it. Sure, yeah. Um, because that, that one actually feels different. Like, there's the baron pit with no no blocking whatsoever. There's baron pit with the one little block in the middle. Yeah. And there's the baron pit that has that long kind of hallway entrance. Yeah. And that one I do think actually changes the game a lot because it's really hard to keep vision in that area. Like, if they, mm -hmm. if they go into that pit, sweep out, you have to actually walk all the way in. It's so easy to get a turn from there. Um, to just like hex flash over the wall or to you know flash over the wall and look for engages yeah. It's really tough because you can't see if they're on the pit You can't see anything until you're in range to ward over and then by then they can be jumping on you and killing you Exactly so like you're right it in the sense of like turning to fight on a team that's yeah. contesting But a team that's also it's really hard to mark the jungler if he wants to come in and smite steal it right Because at least before it's like okay We took the blast going off he doesn't have flash because of the like the fight that we had prior now There's more hallways to it. So technically it's a little harder depending on the jungler so I love that one a lot more because it's just a lot more chaotic. I think the big thing for me is the Voig, like watching teams and listening to players try to figure out how to prioritize the Void Grubs because obviously grubbies, yeah. the might buff to push down turrets is really valuable, but you have to, it's a stacking thing, right? Yeah. Um, and in, in that case, it's actually not as high prio as something like First Herald was mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So it's been really interesting to see people working their heads around like, how important is this? Who am I sending? Am I using it to just like hit level six as a jungler, start the yeah. stacking, and then as the next team, are you gonna try to deny them on the next wave of grubs? I'd be really curious to see once we have a larger sample size of games, if blue side gets first grubs far more frequently. Mm -hmm. That's definitely been my experience in solo queue, just mm -hmm. because solo queue is so much more procedural jungling. You just go bot to top, and then your second clear, bot to top. Look what's here at five minutes, <laughs> the grubs, and the other jungler's on the other side of the map. So that, uh, I think it's easier for blue side, but I agree. I think there's some evolutions to strategies with those where you might just take one or two and then get out of there to make sure the other team can't get the little grubblies that spawn once you the get grubbly. five or six. Grubbly? Yeah, the, yeah, the void mites. <laughs> yeah. Void mites. Yeah. Yeah. All these They're names mites. are going to take a while. I yeah. feel like there's everyone's got their own colloquial term. It's like it's like Hue's abilities. I'm just like, that's the one you got to dodge. She's that's like, the that's QE. All of them. That's the QW. The QE. Yeah, yeah. That's the QQ. <laughs> uh, really quick though, Briar, Nefiri, and Hue are all enabled. Yep. So we could see them, but do you think we will? Uh, I, th I think Huey has, has a chance if people have been putting in time on him. I do think he's relatively strong, but none of them have been that popular. I don't think we would see Nefiri. Briar is really feast or famine, yeah. and I think it's one of those champions that a lot of people are scared to play in competitive because it is really snowball-y, and if you're not ahead, I think it's pretty weak. Well, we did see Huey yeah. in LCK. This is the last time that we can copy other regions because... and just like do their homework Life because patch. we're gonna be on Live Patch. So here are some highlights from other regions. Uh, Xin Zhao has kind of been the one of the highest prio junglers. We're gonna see uh, El Yoya from Mad from last week. All of these are either from LEC last week or um, the LCK this past week. So I expect to see a lot of Zin. Vi is still around. Um, even Maokai was also being played. We saw some Zach jungle Lee from Sin's Peanut. Pretty popular. Yeah, Lee Sin. Um, here, Proxy Udir. Udir oh top is something that's been huge. We saw this uh, first in Demacia Cup, and then this is from LCK earlier this week, uh, where Zeus just kind of takes all this damage. Then <laughs> Senna comes in, um, and he makes out on top. And then this is my absolute favorite, not just because KT won this, um, but this is Barrel's Huey support um, with Def's Ezreal. And Huey, um, mid laners are kind of like, he's strong, he does a lot of damage, but it's about when he comes online. Huey offers so much from his abilities as a support, actually. Um, so this was really fun to watch with the Kalista and the way they use that with the Huey. And then the last thing I want to touch on is double support item bot lane. Because once yep. again, support items are 
broken. So we are seeing this um, more frequently, most specifically with the Lucian Milio, where you see both the Blood Song and the Dream Maker coming out of those uh, new support items. So that's also something we could see in LCS today. Yeah, and I think it will probably get touched next patch because the specific Please. way that Guma <laughs> and Carrier were doing this is actually the Lucian, for those of you who want to try this at home, the Lucian doesn't start with it. He'll yep. get it on his first base. And then also, once you get it, you want to last hit as the Lucian the range minions more than, say, the cannon minion. Because if the support last hits the cannon minion, the support gets 20 gold, you get the full gold. And then if you last hit the range minion, your support will get 14, but you will get 20. Yes. So you can actually amplify your gold. Yeah. And then the longer the game, or, or like the more upgraded the support item gets, and because you're getting it late, the CS penalty has more forgiveness and you're less likely to hit it. So it can actually be very strong, but it's also a little bit of a niche thing, I think. I mean, it, it's incredibly strong. I, I actually don't even think it's niche. Like, I, I think you can play it with almost anything. Like, I've yeah. seen people do this with just, like, double marksman bot lanes. Yeah. I think yep. um, Senna is something that enables it with almost anything. You can I can definitely yeah. do it with anything support. because I'm not good at CSing, so I'll never <laughs> <laughs> So for anyone who's not great at CSing, just do it. I mean, it, it's it's really, really strong, right? You know, you're, as you said, obviously the AD would take the, the range, but then the support is also taking all yeah. the melee, so it's like you're basically you know getting all the last hits guaranteed with gold. the execute. You're boosting your gold, and it does really slingshot you ahead of people who are doing the more standard styles. Um, but I believe Riot has already said that they are going to be gonna nerfing this. Like it's yeah. clear, it's clearly abusive. Yeah. It's clearly yeah. way too strong. It is around for this patch. It shouldn't be their next patch. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is, you just get way more gold generation than an enemy AD who's farming just as well as yep. you. It's just not really possible to keep up. And yeah. the end conclusion is like, not only does Blood Song pay for itself. But you get the spell blade and the exposed weakness mm -hmm. element of it right off the bat. So and like wards. and wards. So like it's actually pretty disgusting. And so, it has gold generation on the yep. item as well. Boom. So like if you just honestly, if you just start spouting words, like it's probably true. <laughs> 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 so uh, there's a lot of truthness to it. And also just overall, you talked about sample size. I would love to see yeah. a larger sample size to just see if the game times are faster. Just because with now grubs being a th an, an early objective mm. that you're fighting for and champ teams yeah. picking uh, Zinz out early. Just yes, his items are good. So I you're think going it's going to be slower. You think it's going to yeah. be slower? It's going to delay Dragon Stack. Because well, I, think, okay, I, think, I think that uh, is one element, but the Baron also is harder to take. Um, I think there's mm, more lethality true. marksmen in the game. There's lower high, there's less high DPS champions in the game, so it's harder to burst down Baron. And the Baron itself is just tankier in this season. So people that I have been seeing have been more afraid to actually start and take Baron that a lot true. of the time, which yeah. I think is delaying games, because if you're not willing to take an early Baron, then you're reliant on Soul, you're reliant on Elder, and things like that to close out the game. So mm. at least I was checking, uh, it is low sample size, but in in some of these I was looking at, uh, the average game times had already gone up like one or two minutes. Yeah, another thing we got to track though is the most popular picks uh, of okay. the split. And this is something that we're maybe, gonna, we're gonna check back on this later, but mm -hmm. there's been a ton of preseason changes. These were our predictions for what we think the most picked yeah. champions would be. <laughs> Except for Emily. No. Emily Wait, double mine is, ashed. Mine didn't actually. Two so ashes. ashes. Two ashes. I should have <laughs> checked, I should have checked this because mine is actually not correct. Okay. okay. Um, um, Basically, ahead. what I said is uh, Varus and Renata, because I thought okay. Ash was going to be permabanned. And similarly for Rumble, uh, I actually did say Cassante because R I thought Rumble and Udyr would be banned. Oh, I see. So I mine, see. Are in, uh, mine are actually incorrect. I hope this graphic doesn't go out on social. So we're, you better believe it, Will. We are, we are doing this basically, it's it's not supposed to be based off presence, it's supposed to be based off the champions picks. that you think will be picked, not yeah, on this patch, exactly. but over the entire split. Correct. So I knew everyone was going to pick Zinn. I think I think Zinn will like at some nerfed. point get nerfed and yeah. fall out of favor. Lee Sin, to me, has been kind of meta-proof for so many years in League. Yeah. I already think he's really strong with Sundered Sky, and I feel like he's kind of just below that, that S tier right now. So I do think if some of the S tiers get nerfed, Lee Sin could really come back into prominence. It's already fairly popular. Um, and then, you know, Ash, I think, is just going to be more on the ban list than on the pick list. So I went yeah. to something like the Varus, something that, again, is pretty meta-proof, works really well with lethality items. The on-hit builds are strong, can abuse the double support stuff. So I was kind of looking at some of the champions that I think, you know, are, are at the top or near the top and yeah. have been mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, because, again, we're trying to p predict what's going to be popular the for the whole split. split. And yeah. in terms of meta-proof, I put down Aphelios because regardless of the item changes, like, if, if the games do go long, it just feels like he will just be the end game. Uh, mm -hmm. Renata was the same idea. I had Nico on there, and that one a, was a risky one. A sleeper. Because it could also yeah. just be banned constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Nico's really popular right now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think it's really popular. I, I went between that one and Nazir, but with at least Nico, I think Proto Belt also is really strong at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of itemization that makes Nico really an impressive pick. So like that as a champion. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of stuff on the game. There's going to be a lot of changes we're going to be tracking throughout the year, but there's also a lot of changes 
with the players and the teams in the LCS offseason. Mm. So we have Rafa here to break it down. Hola, what's up, y'all? Rafa here with the LCS offseason oversimplified. After spending 2023 tormenting various pro players, Mark Zimmerman is the new LCS commissioner and he's brought some exciting new changes. First off, we're playing on the live patch, meaning when a patch drops on Wednesday, the pros will play on it that same Saturday. And yep, you heard right. We're back on the weekends, baby. Moving on to structure, the LCS is now eight teams as we say adios to evil geniuses and golden guardians and hello to Shopify Rebellion who purchased TSM spot in the league. They also purchased a few of their players with Insanity and Boogie headlining the LCS's newest team. Reigning champions Energy are almost completely running it back after destroying G2 at Worlds, bringing FBI and Huhi back together. That's not the only major reunion. Impact is back at Team Liquid with Core JJ and it's not hard to see why. The man won four straight titles the last time he was there. And it's not just reunions. Many players are making their return to the LCS too, even if it's not to their old teams. Inspired, Whippo, Zazel, Ole, and Fake God are all back in LCS. 2024 also features plenty of new blood, with five rookies making their debut in spring, headlined by the long-awaited arrival of Sniper. This kid hit Challenger at 12, rank 1 at 14, and now making his LCS debut for 100 Thieves at just 17 years old. He's the younger brother of former FlyQuest top laner Viper, and he was born in 2006. Does anyone else feel old? And yet he is not even the most hyped pickup of the offseason. While all that was happening, Cloud9 built the super team of all super teams, adding reigning MVP Joji Pyeon to their core of Blabber, Fudge, and Berserker. Not to mention, they brought Vulcan back. I would be surprised if anyone is saying Cloud9 lost the offseason this year, because I believe we are witnessing the dawn of a new era. A lot of changes this year in the LCS. Mm -hmm. One thing that wasn't covered in that video is that every game has always counted, but, but now it counts a little bit more. But has it? It counts more now? Because <laughs> there's only 14 per team because there's only a double round robin every with eight teams. Every game counts. So I broke down the percentages. 7%, 7.14% per game. More percentage than before. Uh, one and a half percent. That can be the difference. Stop losing. Yeah, 49%, <laughs> 51. Did you pass or fail? Sometimes that changes. It's incredible. <laughs> Don't fail. <laughs> For what it's worth, six regular season weeks to decide who does and does not go into playoffs will actually create, as well as playing on live patches, a sense of meaning for a lot of the games. And that's not, I have very mixed thoughts on whether or not you should play like a really robust regular season or whether you should have like a really flippy one. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely in the uh, actual every game counts. And I've got, <laughs> every game counts. I've got to say, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm actually most excited for. I, I think. Really? The reduced number of games? <laughs> no, the live patch. And, okay. and the adaptations that teams are going to have to make, uh, you know, from, from game to game to game. Yeah. So. I think it, it's so interesting. You know, so many people that I, I talk to, the coaches or players from every single team, yeah. and so many people are echoing this whole thing about, oh, you know, like teams, every team has has some player who is basically has connections to LCK or has connections to LPL yeah. or, you know, connections elsewhere, and they're like, this is what we have to play because this is what my friend from the best team in the world sure. said we, sh we should play. Yeah. That's the best team, so we got to play it, right? And people feel a little bit, it seems like they're going to be unchained kind of in this, in this new system where we are going to be the first for every patch after this we're gonna be the first league to play on it yeah. right and so i want to see which team is going to be the most crea creative which team is going to be able to adapt week over week over week to get the biggest advantage on these new patches because with a six week regular season yeah you win out a weekend because you were the first to figure out that you know yeah. x pick is yeah. is the strongest especially on this if new it's patch. uh for those of you who don't know week three and week six are three game weeks. yeah like well. yeah. that, that could those. absolutely get you a buy, right? Like that could be the difference between making playoffs or not. That could be the difference between first or third. I think it's it's massive and it's gonna be really fun to see which team takes the most advantage of it. And I can't count how many coaches or players that you've talked, like I've talked to, where like for instance, if like a champion comes out or an item comes out and it's broken, they're like, we're not gonna practice it because like it's gonna get nerfed in yeah. like a patch from now. Mm. You can't use that as an excuse anymore. Like you're playing on live. And so like in the, in the end of the day, you're just going to have to be willing to try new stuff. Honestly, if it is broken right now, Try it, like play it, because you never know when it's going to get fixed, and you're you definitely know you're going to have to play it the, on that week. Solo queue becomes even more important well, as well, right? Yeah, it does. Being able to figure out like what's strong to bring in his scrims yeah. because you have this really quick turnaround time. You got to be on your stuff. Yeah. Is Zell's most excited about live patch? Raz, what are you most excited about? Ooh, I mean weekends. 
<laughs> it's like, okay. When I heard, when I heard that it was like the, the, like we were sold out. I was like, yeah, it makes sense because I remember seeing those posters last year. Where I was like, I skipped out on work. I was like, we don't want that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, so uh, I know that's been the number one thing that fans have been talking about. So that's what I'm excited for. Emily, for me, it's also a live patch. I really, I feel like a lot of players get into this lull where they're like. Either, like you said, like, we don't want to practice this, it's just going to get nerfed anyway, we don't have to learn this, or they're looking at what they're playing in. I just in noticed this <laughs> <laughs> This is gorgeous. <laughs> got a close-up on this? <laughs> Thank boy? you. Oh, Thank yeah. you. That's the good stuff right Raz there. Raz got that from a fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he made two, one for himself and one for us. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but I think, like, that is a thing that I've been kind of critical of players of in the past, where it's... Just like they haven't necessarily been innovating um, on on the patch as much as either looking and seeing what they're playing in LPL or LCK um, and borrowing from that, or like an unwillingness to try out re really, really out there stuff. Like just yeah. last night, we saw Brand Jungle mm -hmm. in LCK. Yep. Uh, and it was hilarious. I feel like Raz is stalking me. <laughs> <laughs> I see oh, he's watching not me I, I, want, I want players to actually challenge themselves to play new things. Because when True. it happens, like, I, love, um, I loved when, for example, Palafox brought out the Aurelian Soul. And he was yeah. one of the first to play it, even though we were not first on that patch. Um, and then people from all around the world were like, here's how you play this champion. He actually piloted it really well. I don't even remember whether they won that game, but I know he was getting a lot of praise and lauded for like, this is how you use the new Aurelian Soul. So I want more of that from our pros because I do think we have a lot of creative people mm -hmm. and we just need to push them to, to do that. Speaking of creativity, and I'm going to cheek and I'm going to go number two. Yeah, please. Uh, is actually- I didn't like your first one, so. How okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pandering <laughs> man. I love- um, so I think for the me, it's actually I'm the draft. The most excited about is <laughs> so the fact that the teams are drafting and then they have about like ten minutes to get to go on stage and then so a lot of it is now they have a lot of time between the time in which they draft and then play their game to really strategize, talk about their level ones, uh, so they can be a little creative on that one. Uh, it's it's a good challenge on analysts and coaches to be like, okay, now that we know that we've guaranteed the draft and we know what we're playing mm. against, so we can actually have a pretty good idea of like. A, early game planning if we need to. Because uh, all of that stuff, if you're on stage it's it, so last fast. year, it's, it's so fast. fast. You kind of blurt out what's the most important thing you have to prioritize and what, you, what you're going to have to leave behind yeah. to remind your teammates or even just say, okay, this is what we practice, so we're going to try it. This time, you get to really theory craft. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with anything that any of you have said. Yes. But I'm disappointed that no one has talked about the teams. So I'm okay. most excited to see how Blabber and JoJo coexist with That's good. Berserker as having three MVPs on the same team and if they can deliver on the expectations of winning the LCS. Because last split, Cloud9, it felt like they were just going to win both splits kind of the whole year. Yeah. And then they didn't. They felt ridiculously short of where we thought they were going to be, mm -hmm. even though they still made finals. But they had that bad loss to Fnatic. Yeah. We thought they were going to walk over energy in the last LCS game we saw in the Summer Split Finals, and they got smashed. So they retooled. They've added another MVP, and I want to see if they can they can do it because they should be able should be able to take that team to the promised land. Like they should be able to win multiple splits. Blabber should be able to win with his fifth unique mid laner, which I think is a really cool story. And then it's kind of all about other teams trying to chase them all. I mean, they are the NA Avengers, right? Like this is this is yeah. all we've said this about a lot of teams that haven't been like remember 2020. Two TL when they had like Bjergsen and Bwipo and Santorin and Hansama and mm -hmm. Kordjej were like yeah of course and then they never even made a final yeah I mean so here, here's the difference when people talk about super teams like I feel like that TL team was a super team yeah this 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 Cloud Nine team is not just like slamming together random stars that have never played together and that yeah. is that is what I think is the big difference mm -hmm. they already had the three core from from C9 um, what do you Vulcan. Mean? Vulcan's never played with Berserker and JoJo's never played with Blabber. Sure, but JoJo has played with Vulcan. Vulcan has played with with Blabber, right? Like okay. they, they added two pieces yeah. they and they have they, have, they yeah. have played with each other. Yeah, okay. Right? Like not every single piece has not played with each other, yeah. but a lot of them have actually interacted. Really, it feels like the only like brand new, oh my God, how is it going to work piece is JoJo, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that is a very big difference to when you're talking about like the TL super team or some of these other super teams in the past where it feels like more just like an amalgamation of pulling in different stars from various places where you don't, know as much if it's going to work together or not yeah. because that is always the big question when you add all these different pieces is like how's this energy going to be right and a lot of people are talking about with jojo and blabber 
okay, Blabber's style in LCS is very farm heavy, right? Mm -hmm. He likes to prioritize farm. He gets level advantages. And then well, he takes I would over say his fights. style is efficient because he led sure. the league in kills and assists at 14 last year. And week. he also leads in CSD, right? Yes. Yeah. Whereas, you know, JoJo is, is hyper aggressive in mid lane. So people are saying, okay, well, you need a jungler to hover you if you're going to be really pushing advantages in mid lane, which maybe goes against Blabber's style. So that, I think, is the question mark. But Blabber is such a smart jungler and has made it work with so many different mid laners. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I feel like... This is absolutely the team everyone's chasing. And we've already seen proof in which JoJo was able to do that because he played with Inspired in his, in his rookie year and he was rough for at least like a few weeks. But then he was able to play around giving resources to Inspired, but also like Inspired being able to adapt and play towards JoJo a little bit more. So I think we've seen that before. And for me, what, what is important when we talk about super teams is what you've just named, like brand name. With mm -hmm. Team Liquid of that year, like Bjergsen just came out of retirement and the questions were like, how quickly is he going to get unrusted? Where in this case, JoJo just came from an MVP season. So, mm -hmm. like, we just had that. Blabber had a strong performance. Berserker had a strong performance. Vulcan was a bit tough, but I think we've seen Vulcan at, a, at, a, at, a, at his highest befores. So, like, just generally feeling, I feel like this is a super team because of their most recent performances for the most part. Did we all put them first in our power rankings? Yes. yes. Let's find yes. out. Let's check it out. I, mean, I guarantee did. you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? No spoilers. I chance. And so everyone put energy too as well. That's the other interesting thing to me because I, I was talking with Mark about this actually before the day, and he was like, I was disappointed in everyone for doing it because everyone who put energy second had the caveat of like, but I've heard they've been terrible in scrims, yeah. or but I feel like okay. they'll actually be lower. But so in fairness, is this justified number two? They were apparently terrible in scrims last year too. So and they won the LCS, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think the big thing with NRG, since uh, we've nice already job, talked Rez. a lot about C9. The... Yep. Yeah, sorry, good sorry. Job. Exactly. Good job. Um, but yeah, I think the, the big thing with NRG is um, they're keeping four of their five players. So you already know that roster four works really well together. And then they're adding in Huhi, who has already played with FBI, right? Like yeah. we had all of these statistics about how long they were together as a bot lane yeah. when they were on 100 Thieves uh, from Golden Guardians era even. So um, I think that is a really interesting addition that's also relying on their pre-existing synergy. And Huhi does seem like he would be a good fit on that team yeah. given like his strengths and also what he likes to do in the bot lane um so that's why but like when i submitted this i actually had like uh, i gave it to our producer graham and it was like c9 and then it was gap and then it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> goodness these are so similar something that I would give me as well who had an amazing year uh just last year and also was like much i think was better in terms of like his, his overall effective champion pool. Uh, he can play more like uh, the range matchups, like Nami, if he's willing to play that. So I actually was really high on the Huhi pickup. And another one, as you could tell, I had Team Liquid relatively low in comparison to Shopify. Yeah. And I think Shopify is a team well coached, also really high on the fact that they brought that bo boogie alongside um, Insanity. I think ins Insanity is going to come in, and he's right now, to me, a top three mid laner in our league. So as long as that, uh, the only question mark to me is going to be their bot lane situation. Mm -hmm. And of course, like how fake God's gonna fare. So you have JoJo, okay. Palafox, and then Insanity. Okay. So that's how I'd rate it. Um, so I'm really high on the fact that they brought in a good core of their unit uh, as long, along with their coaching staff. And I, I think that they're gonna have a, a really strong split. Big question on Team Liquid is that they have uh, newer elements. I mean, newer elements as in they brought back APA, but it's gonna be a question of like how much he's actually developed in the off season. Yeah. Um, and so I'm excited for them with their new coach in spawn, but that's just my, my thought process. All right, let's see what the predictions are for today. Those are the predictions for end of spring split regular season, so we can check back on that later. But let's look at today's docket of games and Raz. Oh! Ja Raz could just pull ahead does the today switcheroo. He put time. Immortals eighth and then says they'll win and <laughs> said they'll lose. I was debating with my producer to change number eight and seven because to me, Dignitas and Immortals are a yeah. tough one. I actually think I Immortals. I was shocked every single person had Immortals. That's yeah, because for me, the I bottom three were like, all interchangeable. Yeah. I wanted like, to change more it. surprising almost yeah. than yeah. every like person having, having C9 first. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I legit wanted to last second change it because I think the individuals on IMT are better. Uh, it's just going to be an issue of like how well they play together as a unit. Yeah, well, I think that's a really good 50 game. Really quick, we got about a minute. Let's okay. talk about okay. TL versus 100 Thieves. We have 
a lot of things on TL that Raz just touched on, but let's talk about 100 Thieves really quickly, what we're looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, for 100 Thieves, I think a lot of people are excited for uh, for General Sniper coming up, right? There's a lot yeah. of questions about, you know, some of the young players, you know, on this team. Are they going to be able to really step up and play at that highest level? Uh, General Sniper is someone people have been looking forward to since he was 14, rank mm -hmm. one in solo queue at that age. He's the yep. brother of Viper, who is another LCS pro. This guy, I think he's going to be special. The question is, can he do it right now? Against he's already impact. 17. Yeah. And I think the thing in talking to him before the season started, is he was like, I hope that top lane is an island so I can just 1v1 all the time and show everyone how good I am because of the terrain changes up there. He's like, yeah, just leave us alone and I'm just going to try to attack my opponent. Yeah, Impact back in a TL jersey as well. Really looking forward to this one and also looking forward to this year of LCS. So without further ado, let's get into it. One, but I've got some changes. Okay. This is the one. Yo, he's finally here. Coffee for Cassante. Last year was a fluke. Yeah, yeah. All right, man, you're all done. Next. Go, go, no. We'll see him soon. We're ready. I'm here to make enemies. If I play contracts, it's just another day on the job. Honestly, I think their win was a fluke. People can think what they want to think. We're coming for them. I'm done thinking about them. so lucky. It's time to get them out of my head. Talk is cheap. I'm tired of seeing them everywhere. That trophy is mine. Do you even understand how to play league? There's a reason there's no MVP on your team. Don't worry. We're next. Can't wait to see them again. Not if we see you first. Is there a trick 5G? <laughs> David Sheesh Turley? <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Awesome. That's really good. What does this say? <laughs> 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 
Coffee for uh, Mojo Jojo Joe Pune. <laughs> <laughs>
double support item is something that has once again reared its head with all the game changes. Yep. With Seraphine naturally being a champion that can shine in those types of situations, not really surprised to see her getting locked in here. Yeah, exactly. But this is the first uh, pick of Seraphine in pro so far. So this is not something that has actually been We're played first. a lot. It has been banned a couple times. At least, you know, maybe there was one earlier today that I missed. But uh, according to the data I'm looking at, you know, it's something that would really, really well. I have seen it on uh, Live Patch, you know, playing this double support style. It also works really well with Yone because you can Seraphine ult through the Yone to use that to extend as the yep. Yone goes in. These dive comps pair really well. Ash is the highest presence champion in pro across the globe right now. So that getting through picks and bans a little bit of a surprise. And TL going for a lot of kind of the meta B style champions. I'm expecting this to be Ash support. Jin is the AD for Yon. They're probably going to play double support items. Yep. This is likely to be Udyr top for impact. It has been almost exclusively tank Udyr that I've seen in pro. Though if you watch solo queue, there is Lethality Udyr, there's AP Udyr, there's Bruiser Udyr. So there is a potential to have something mixed up a little bit. Yeah, just earlier this morning, I believe I saw, I saw LS tweeting about... Uh the Brazilian League and saying how I want to see more people building Leandries on Udyr. Yeah. So I'm interested to see exactly what type of builds we're going to get out of this champion who traditionally has had more options than others. But the Karma locked in, like you just said there, for 100 Thieves. This could be double Enchanter bot lane. And I, I'm kind of expecting it yeah. to be double Enchanter bot lane here for Meech and Ayla. Uh, Meech, obviously, you know, making his LCS debut as well. There's so many new players, it feels like, coming into the league this year. Obviously, a lot of returning faces trying to prove themselves as well. You know, you look at the mid lane, Quid, APA, both back for their second year in the LCS. APA didn't even have a full split, though. I believe he yeah. had seven games before he went into playoffs and then went off to Worlds. So it has been quite the acceleration for these guys. And Quid, obviously not living up to the standards that he had set for himself, the expectations that people had for him coming in last split. So really is going to want to start off this split on the right foot. I've been hearing he's been performing, you know, really well individually in scrims, that this guy is someone who can really show us a lot more than we got to see from him last year. Yeah. So I'm excited to see, you know, what Quid can show us here coming into today. And I know a lot of people are hyped up about Meech. It's him and Masu, who's AD carry for FlyQuest now. Those two both coming out of the Academy system, coming out of the Tier 2 ecosystem. I know a lot of the guys who cast those leagues are super excited about yeah. both of these two. So I really want to see what 100 Thieves can pull out here. It's jungler focus in the second half of the bands from Team Liquid. They're getting rid of the Jarvan. They're getting yeah. rid of the Nocturne. They want to try to control some of that gank power, some of that early pressure that River's best games were all Fine by. Exactly. I mean, River, such a massive pickup here. 400 Thieves when he came in the lead on Dig. Everyone knew him for the Jarvan. Obviously, did great things on Golden Guardians last year. That team exited the league. So 100 Thieves, the beneficiaries of that, were able to grab him. Also picked up some of the, of the Golden Guardians coaching staff, I do believe, as well. So uh, some of those guys have been able to kind of spread out amongst these different teams. And if we're talking about coaching staff, another big deal, I think, over here for Team Liquid, who, by the way, just got their oh, cheat code Ziggs. champion, APA, getting the signature <laughs> Ziggs pick. Okay. That's one way for Team Liquid to be able to start this off, man. Yeah, that's a huge pick for APA. You know, if you've watched him in Champions Q, this pick, everyone kind of knows you got a permaban against him. He was a monster on it last year. He was obviously really well known for it. And you started touching on it, but this is Spawn's debut as the head coach for TL. It's also Golden Glue's debut as an LCS 100 Thieves coach. So new coaches being promoted up, guys who have been in the systems for both of these teams. You know, 100 Thieves obviously working with Golden Glue in the Academy. A TL also Spawn, you know, yep. was with them in the Academy. You know, won an Academy title, has been around in that orc for quite a long time. So pressure on the coaches to make things work right out the gates here as well. But it is going to be Zinn, another super popular pick on this patch yeah. for Umti oh. in his debut. But it's Let's a general go. sniper, Riven. Game one of the LCS stage. You couldn't write a better script. I love this. You bring in this kid who's been an absolute legend as he's climbed up the ladder and made his way to the LCS. And in game number one, oh you God. tell him to drop the <laughs> weights and give him his trademark champ. Going up against Impact, this guy is a decade-long veteran, and this kid just slammed his one trick and said, let's go. And by the way, there was an interview Degon had with Impact where Degon was asking Impact, what do you think about General Sniper? And he was saying, he needs to drop the ego. He's not very good at team fighting. He's not going to do that no. well. I don't care about him. Impact had some pretty strong words. So Sniper throwing down the ribbon here. Impact likely going to be playing Tank Udyr, going to be playing Comfort for himself. So if Sniper could have a big game against Impact in his debut after you got trash talked in the interview, 
Damn, what a way to kick off that LCS career. Let me just put this in some perspective for y'all. We know that Impact has been playing for a long time. Impact won Worlds, got his World skin for Jax back in 2013. Sniper was either six or seven years old at that <laughs> point. That's the difference between these two players in terms of age and experience. But Sniper doesn't seem phased at all. I cannot wait to see how this top lane goes down. Absolutely. Impact is the LCS top lane GOAT. We did the votes for it, you know, in the past. He was pretty much unanimously considered the most successful LCS top laner of all time. This guy has won with many different teams, has been successful through every meta over the past decade. This is his, his 11th year in competitive, I believe it is. It's ridiculous yeah. how long this guy has been around. So to go up against an absolute veteran, someone who's at the top of the game for so long in your first game on the LCS stage is an immense amount of pressure here. And I think that this is so good, not just to have him reunited back on Team Liquid with Core JJ, who, you know, was his teammate during that big streak that Team Liquid had of winning so much, but having a veteran like this, having a leader like this on a team that has Yawn and APA, who are both still really new guys, I think can do a lot to promote this team working together and all play it on the same page. I agree. We've seen that recipe really pay off for a lot of different teams in the past, right? You know, not just trying everything new, having some veterans in there, having some people that can be that rock for the team and really help you to be comfortable when you're moving on a stage as a rookie. So it is going to be that double enchanter bot lane, kind of as expected. Meech is playing the TP. APA is playing TP on the Ziggs. Uh, Sniper and Impact both TP in top lane, so nothing too insane as far as Ignites or Combat Summoners. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be double Enchanter bot lane versus double AD bot lane. So this is going to be a really interesting one. You know, generally the strategy is you do not support start with double support item. Right. You get that support item on your second base. Hunter Thieves sees that they are moving in. They had that ward over on the river. Um, we're able to spot them as they were moving in. Uh, so that is definitely key here and is going to help to keep them safe. I'm really interested to see how these terrain changes are going to change the type of plays that we see teams go for here, too. We talked about all the new stuff in the league at the top of the day, but the game itself is also so different. Right now, though, we're saying a bye. We have an interview ready to go. Raz is sidelined with Viper. What's up, everyone? I've got LCS alumni and, of course, older brother of Viper. How's it going? It's great, man. I'm very, very excited to see Sniper play, and I'm just glad he locked in Riven just to... You know, now that I'm here, that's nice to see in front of my face. Yeah, and honestly, being able to watch your brother kind of following your footsteps in his first debut on Riven, what's your expectation? And do you have any, like, stories about Sniper just for people to know him better? Sniper's been, like, ever since he, you know, found out that he's joining LCS, he's been putting in a lot of hours every day, uh, grinding his ass off during the offseason um, for hours and hours and hours. So we're going to see him this year. We're going to see how well he does. I think he's going to do great. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to see it. I'm Hell yeah! Glad I'm here. I don't want to take too much of your time then. Thanks a lot, Viper, 100%. And let's get to watch the games out here. Thank you. I love seeing the family support, man. That's absolutely fantastic. Nothing too crazy happening early on in this game. We've still got everybody just kind of going about their normal business. Junglers clearing through their camps. Yeah, so we got the, the Twitch chat poll results here on which lane they want to focus on. So we're going to be watching top lane a little bit more, as a lot of people do want that. But again, coming in bot side first. It's bot lane that immediately pops off with Ayla forced down to 200 HP. Omsi doesn't get there in time to influence anything. Oh. Sniper and Impact are trading back and forth. Sniper gets the better of him in the quick trade, then disengages before Impact can keep it going. Yeah, Impact with the uh, ulti turtle there does heal up a little bit, though. Uh, Udyr, really resilient, is someone that can win out in a lot of these fights. Very difficult to actually deal with in that 1v1. This guy is kind of just a brick wall. We can see APA, though, pushing in as we are in that yeah, multi-lane camera right now. APA shoving in Quid in that mid lane, trying to keep him chunked down, trying to keep him locked under tower. As bot lane has been so scrappy, and you can see Umti down there with Core trying to get, grab that, uh, that Grom and threaten this potential dive. Yeah, Umti doing a good job counter jungling there. Stole away the blue buff, stole away the Grom, just making sure that he's applying early pressure here with this Zinjal as the double root from Seraphine connects onto Yawn, but there's no follow-up really ready. Sniper and Impact, these guys are both ready to trade, but this is not the all look at you, you look at me, we both last hit minion type of top lane. <laughs> no, Riven has got to play from ahead. This is a champion that is not easy to pilot in team fights, and Sniper is just trading very aggressively. River up here on the top side, but Impact is doing such a good job of not allowing the wave to crash, because he knows his jungler is on bot side, it's very likely that since River didn't show there, he's up on top side, so he's yeah. trying to keep the wave off his tower and deny any sort of a chance of a dive. Yawn lands the root there, but Meech 
throwing out an E of his own to push Yon back so he couldn't step forward and get that fourth shot off. Sniper and Impact getting so incredibly low here. And now that River has had to face, Sniper desperately needs to crash this wave and get the heck out of there. We can see though, the Zin was spotted on that deep ward that was placed by River. So Sniper knows Zin is coming. He's revealed as well by that vision plant and he's got to back up. He knows the Zin is coming and you can see the big red bar charged all the way up underneath Impact bad, as though. well. Can make things a little bit tricky. So, yep, looks like we're just going to go ahead. It's going to be a back angle here for Sniper as bot side. The skill shots keep flying back and forth, and Team Liquid maintains pressure and control over the lane. Some of that CS is going to be made up between the two as the wave crashes in, but still a nice little lead for Yawn. Yeah, it is a, is a good lead there uh, for Yawn here over on that Jin. And the wave, you know, was not in the best spot there for Sniper. A lot of that was kind of getting denied, um, but he had to reset, obviously, with OMT on that top side, pushing him off the wave. And a couple seconds ago, you could see there was an assist me ping from 100 Thieves here in the Herald pit. Ed, Ed, and Eddie have made their way onto the rift, and it's very early focus as Ayla flashes away in the bot side. Core JJ, one more shot will do it. That's it, the first blood for Team Liquid. Meanwhile, Umpty's taking the objectives on the other side of the map. 100 Thieves wanted to intervene with the PA is going to be caught between a rock and a hard play. River and Quinn going in after him. The soul unbound takes him low, and with APA unable to go forward any further, it's still Umpty being left to secure the remainder of the grubs. Yeah, he's going to be able to grab all the grubs there. Umpty feeling pretty good about that. APA is pushed out, does have to flash, but Impact had Pryo in that top lane, was pushing back Sniper. Uh, and it's going to allow them to be able to secure that neutral objective. River now trying to invade on that bot side. His sniper's just getting shoved out. And remember, he has no TP. Uh, that is the Phoenix Form ulti that does detach from you, that chases after Very him strong. on that ribbon. is really strong. Uh, his AoE slow, high AoE damage. And now Sniper going to have to take a bad base here. Vi is not on the top side to cover, so he's going to have to actually reset with two crashing waves at his turret. He's going to fall way behind here. We can watch this one more time as that W root from Yon set it up, and then Core flashes in. Meech caught that root back onto Yon, so he couldn't follow up, and it's Core who is able to flash in and get that. Two full waves lost, though, on top side, plus the plate. So even though Impact isn't that ahead, you know, on the farm, it's just a 1ZS. Yeah. It's so much experience lost because Impact just hard shove there. So it is going to end up being, you know, almost level seven, you can see for the Udyr there. I'll be curious if we click over to Sniper exactly how far down he is, but I would assume at least half a level. Oh, yeah, yeah. So more than half a level, about two thirds of a level there behind an experience uh, and lost that plate, which is going to make it really difficult. And you can see, especially because it's triple physical damage topside, Impact's going to do nothing but stack armor this game, right? He's rushing tabbies. He already has a chain vest. He can go towards even things like Frozen Heart, which are really powerful on Udyr. Uh, as the support item has now come in for Meech, but Yon not going to go towards it. So he's not going to be going towards Bloodsong. It is just going to be that single support item on the TL side. The 100 Thieves are doing that double support item strategy. So for anybody who's not familiar with this strategy, essentially what you're doing is as the AD carry as the farming champ, you're making sure that you're last hitting the range minions. As, hold on, Quinn's going in after APA, but he snaps back as soon as Umpty tries to jump in. Because you actually end up getting more farm for them through that item, while the support still last hits all the cannons like you would expect from previous time. Here comes the curtain call. Firing range opens up. First shot goes wide. Next two hit. It's a Mega Inferno bomb coming in from downtown. They want to get Ayla low and then go for the execute damage. They won't quite get it. Meech wants to tank it. But God blows his head off. Team Liquid. Another kill in the bottom lane. As APA is thrown up into the air and dumped right back down into the ground. River gets it done, and 100 Thieves make their way onto the board. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid heading over to the Drake now. They don't just want to trade a kill for a kill. They always want to be getting something more. Yeah, nicely done. Going to be able to get something more down on that bot side. And Yon and Core really pushing the pace. This is Yon coming into his second year here. One rookie of the year last year. Really did improve from spring to summer. Mm -hmm. They have been a team that has been so well known for really grinding hard in scrims on solo queue and wanted to make it known that they were going to be a team that would scale over time, that would build up over time. And I think we are starting to see those results. TL was so good in the early game last year. You know, Yawn and Core are the only bot lane in the LCS that stayed the same. Every other one changed at least one component. So they have an advantage of having that input synergy. And we have to see, can they make the most of it? River, looking for the gank up here topside. You're not going to get a whole lot out of it. I think they're kind of just looking to get rid of the rage from the Udyr, especially yeah. with River having already used his ulti back in mid. Yeah, and he really wants to crash it, right? Again, Impact is just holding the wave. 
that's another benefit of having all this armor is the minions don't deal that much damage to you, right? So you yeah. can just keep going in turtle stance and holding the wave off your tower. And it's making it very, very difficult for Sniper because Sniper can't crash the wave and get these beneficial resets that he wants. He's going to have to base again. But when we look back to topside, that's going to be more minions getting denied from more experience that he's falling behind, which is going to make his life very, very difficult. Impact does now elect to just shove this out uh, because he should be able to get that fully pushed in with the Phoenix form. And he's going to likely take a base of his own, probably grab some tabbies. But with Yone, Vi, and Riven on the top side, like this guy is going to be a brick wall. Yeah. And sure, Karma and Seraphine will do some damage, but mostly they're there to just kind of buff up these other members. Yeah, Yone has a little bit of mixed damage on the auto attack passive, but I just think Udyr is going to be nearly impossible for 100 Thieves comp to really deal with. Yone is the main character of the anime. Karma and Seraphine are his buddies to go, yeah, get him when he's fighting the final <laughs> boss. It's up to Yone, but impact is going to be tough, man. I feel like Turtle and Phoenix dance together is just, it's like you're saying, it's the perfect recipe yeah. for playing the way that impact knows he needs to play this. Up to going after the first one of the grubs. That's four grubs for Team Liquid so far. Sniper shows up, prevents him from being able to take the next one. That's very these. important because remember, five and six are the big break points. That's where you start to spawn the little Ooh, the trying little to come back, maybe. Looks like, okay, no smite, this is the though. first no one, smite. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just gonna be a 4-2 split, or at least it should be. River and Quid can get that last one, and there they go. Grubs are taken care of, that's off the map. Remember, once we get to 14 minutes, that's when we're gonna see the Herald like yep. we would be used to in the previous days, except now you can drive it like a car. Oh, uh, there's Bjergsen. Hell yeah! Go cheering on double lift here. That's what I love to see. Golden Daddy! <laughs> 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 cheering on Gold Blue as well, okay. Let's go, let's go. Umpty showing up mid lane. As he's not going to get a whole lot here, just passing back through. Remember, the first Drake was taken by Team Liquid. We still have another couple minutes before that second one spawns, but Umpty's going to head back down into the bot side. Not any plays to really look for at this point, since Yon and CoreJJ are both taking their backs. Boots of Swiftness competed, completed, excuse me, for the Jin Helps a lot against the Seraphine Karma duo since they both have such powerful slows. Just give yeah. you the extra move speed to dodge it to begin with on top of the slow resist if you still fail. And then it's it's triple melee champions, right? So move yeah. speed in general is just going to be incredibly high value here for him. Uh, has actually gone for Opportunity, which does give you uh, that lethality that comes up after being out of combat for eight seconds. Uh, also, you know, if you're able to kill someone, you do get that move speed that procs after it. So that, in addition, if you can get that first kill, 150 move speed, pretty powerful, amplified by the boots of swiftness. I know two things about Jin players is that arrow gets a field goal. They like One, they fast. like counting to four. Two, they like <laughs> running fast. It seems like an item that's going to make sense. We'll see how it plays out here for him as we continue moving on. The arrow just barely missing there, a little bit unfortunate for TL. But now 100 Thieves are taking a chance. They want to go in. APA goes up the wall, but his face is sealed. 100 Thieves followed up and Quinn grabs the kill. Now with a stolen bounty goes back up the wall looking for even more this time on Umpty. Or and but the Thieves are now behind enemy line. Yon opens up the firing range and the curtain's about to be called. The first three shots all oh. miss and he ends up going 0 for 4. Meech makes his way over but Team Liquid do not complete Oh, here goes his impact though. 100 Thieves running out. Impact is here on the flank, but he has to be careful. He can't go in completely on his loan. Some sniper also answering TP with TP, making sure Impact can't cut him off. And 100 Thieves exfiltrate the hot zone. Yeah, I thought that, that they were going to lose a lot more members there. When Yawn and Core came in, I thought it would be a couple kills for sure going their way. But at the end of the day, you know, Yawn has a couple of his ulti bullets flashed, so wasn't able to hit the other two. Core ends up having to flash, so not really able to get much on the collapses. Again, they're attacking APA. They don't want to leave him in this comfort zone on this pick that he is so experienced on. You know, APA as well. This is something that people have talked a lot about, his champion pool, right? Right. You know, they talk a lot about, he's a six one trick, he's this, he's that. And that's one of the criticisms that he will have to try to answer in this second year. But here it is one more time. Vi alt into that faded sealed here from Quid, guaranteeing that it does land so much dive again. And TL do make the collapse, but with Yon and Core coming over, I thought this was going to be some kills. They were pretty low, but we're jumping back to live, so probably some action, you know? Minion farming action. It's an action of a sort. Yeah. You know? It's not the good kind. Though. Hey, if you're a minion, you don't like this kind. That's of true. That's life or death out there for a caster minion. <laughs> not usually life either. It's, uh, <laughs> it's one of those or situations, but yeah. it's not much of an or. But yeah, you can see on your screen right now, like you were talking about, his champion pool, this is not the standard mid lane champion pool. No. A lot of mid laners are not playing the Ziggs and the Zerath. Nico mm -hmm. had some more popularity last year compared to previous years. But if you think about, you know, competitive play as a whole, she's not very popular either. Exactly. Cassio even as well was more of a niche pick. You know, when you look at his, his solo queue picks last year, in solo queue, 
who's playing all kinds of like Kled and Ziggs and Cassio and these champions that were not very prevalent. Um, and he is really well respected on those champions, but also has to be able to play those meta picks. And we're going to see oh. Impact looking for River. The arrow connects. There's the Ziggs bomb. Yeah, but Quid's right there. And Impact is a little cautious because he does not want to overcommit to this and end up getting punished. Sniper was also showing yeah. up. So even though it looked like there may have been a play there, Impact is just, he's too experienced to fall for these things, man. He's paying attention. And he is a tank here at the end of the day, right? So you're yep. not going to be 100 to 0 and anybody. You're not going to be bursting them down. He is going for that Iceborne as that first item. Eclipse on the other side there. Finished up by Sniper. Sniper, a lot of CDR on this item, a lot of AD as well. It's no longer lethality like it right. was in the last season, uh, but really strong rush item here for the Riven. You can see Sundered Sky now finish up for River. A lot of burst on that. It's almost kind of like what Eclipse was for a little yeah, bit, sort you know? Of. Except it's health instead of a shield. Exactly, but like people are kind of slotting that in in the same way, like Lee Sins and Fies and stuff like that, who used to go the Eclipse rush and are now going Sundered Sky as that first item. Umti now invading on this bottom side, but Quid is making the collapse. Hunter Thieves want to push him out, and Umti could be in trouble. Yeah, Umti throws back the wind, becomes lightning. Now, he has his own Titanic Hydra. This item's very strong. Quid wanted to engage on him here with a Fate Seal, but just barely misses it. Crescent Sweep is going to disengage and get Umti out of there. Remember, these guys got four of the grubs, and so that makes it so easy, especially combined with Ziggs, to just knock that turret down. Grab first turret of the game. Exactly. They're able to just kind of punch right through that, and it is difficult. 400 Thieves, it feels like. You know, when they don't have Quid doing a lot of damage, when he is not there, they don't have a lot of damage to actually, you know, kind of scrap on that bottom side. It's like the bot lane collapses, but they don't want to fully commit onto Umti. It's going to be hard to burst him down. As you said, Titanic completed. It is really strong. It is not like it was last season. Now has the auto attack reset again, which right. is so strong on all these champions. Like stacking up the three talent strike is a lot easier. Um, people like it on all kinds of different champs, but in particular, it's one of the things that has really enabled Zin to rise back to the top of the meta. Well, it's kind of what we've talked about before with these enchanter type of compositions is the issue for 100 Thieves, right? You're mentioning how if Quid's not there, it's hard to move. These compositions are so scary if they can death ball five men down a yeah. lane, but if you separate the enchanters from the anime protagonists, then you're not going to have a functioning composition. Exactly. Just got a couple Krillins in the side lane, you know? What's he going to do? Not he much. Got... <laughs> they him in like the second arc of the show. <laughs> Well, 100 Thieves, let's see how this is going to go. Because honestly, the game is still incredibly close, man. 200 gold separating them as the Rift Herald has spawned. It's Team Liquid who are immediately going after it. There is a ward in the pit from 100 Thieves. They know this is going on. And you have to look at Sniper down in that bottom lane. If he doesn't TP, they're not contesting. So, you know, they are fishing around a little bit here. But he is just going to commit to that bottom tower. So it is going to be Herald giving over. River going to have to get out of the pit. And we'll see 100 Thieves threatening an engage, but River will just disengage. I think they yeah. wanted to keep them interested, trying to delay impact from going back towards that bot side to answer the push. Won't be any tower damage really done here by Sniper, but he will at least deny a couple minions. That's what it seemed like to me, is River just Vault Breakers over the wall. He stands there and makes Team Liquid look at him to see if 100 Thieves is really going to go for this. And it's more of a distraction than anything, because it's hard to provide a function in that situation as 100 Thieves and Team Liquid supports will continue trading blow for blow here on the wards. The gold stays dead even between these squads. The APA is going to be left to wave clear top side. Impact versus Sniper, the 1v1 in bottom side. Impact is more than confident in his ability to repel the Riven with this full armor Udyr. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Honestly, for Riven, when you're going up against full armor with gear, you're going to need some armor pen. You're probably going to need a couple items before you're really getting through them. Might need some sustain in there as well, or Udyr is just going to kind of smack you to death. You're, you're not expecting Riven to die in this kind of matchup, but you're also not really expecting him to be able to kill the Udyr uh, until maybe really late in the game. So it is tough, right? Because they're very reliant on his damage. He's at least creating a little bit of a farm lead. You know, he's been grouping a little bit less than Impact. Impact, when he keep you down a bot, lost a wave. Lost a wave as well when he moved up towards that Herald. But Impact doesn't really care. You know, he's playing for the team. He's playing this tank style. He just has to be there to enable all the damage that he has from his mid lane and his bot lane. Uh, Impact going in with the double activation there on the Phoenix stance. Puts a lot of burn on the Sniper, forcing him back yet again. Second item completed for Yawn is the Serpent's Fang here in the Jin. All five enemy champions generate shields. Yeah. And two of them do it in a big AoE. So I can see a lot of value out of this. There's TP from Riven. Coming in. APA already having to use the stopwatch as the Seraphine ulti flies out. River still looking to lock him down while back in the middle of Thumpty getting bursted. Meech grabs the kill on him as APA still barely stands. 
in. In fact, give it a 1v2 as River and Sniper chase after him. Quick goes in for Yon, but he ain't gonna find it. Curtain call forces him back. 100 Thieves take two, and don't lose a man. The dragon's about to spawn, and the Thieves are getting it on. Exactly, it's great timing on the play there. The TP comes in from Sniper, and they don't try to overextend, chasing down Core and Yon, who they knew had flashes. Instead, they collapse on MT, they kill off the jungler, they kill off the mid laner, guaranteeing there's no real chance of a contest here at the dragon. TL, we're trying to look for this play here. Core jumps in the Herald, pushes forward, but 100 Thieves are ready. Double TP coming in. You can see the communication on point. Both the Yone and the Ribbon TPing and arriving at the exact same time. Everyone collapsing on MT, bursting him down. Is on the side. River on a solo mission there. Zeroes out APA. That's all they get, but that's all they needed. Is they're going to be able to follow it up with the Dragon. And TL, though, striking back on that top side. We'll get a turret back. Damage dealt last team fight. The only one on either team breaking 2,000 was River on the Vi. That was like all APA. And when you're in the middle of a big scrap too, if you can Sunder Sky multiple people, remember the cooldown is individual on target. So you can get a lot of value out of that too. APA currently 0, 3, and 0 on the Ziggs. They have done a good job with these dive tools to focus him out and not let him play the game he wants to play. He also used his stasis, you know, and that is a, a 1,600 gold investment now, I believe. I might, I might oh, have the price it's, wrong. It's, so it's not just Stopwatch, though. I love this though. new version of League of Legends. Stopwatch is dead. It's yep. six feet under right where it should be. So it, that's Ooh, an expensive use there. He doesn't get it back until he gets Zonius. Ayla having a flash over the wall as Umpty found him. Needed to use that summoner to escape, otherwise the extra Ooh. damage over the top. You can see if Yon can get you even a little bit low and start yeah. dialing in the damage from that curtain call, it's very scary with these lethality gin builds. He has not been on point though with the ult. He's not been able to connect enough of those bullets in some of these shots. You know, missed the first couple. Uh, was able to hit with that four shot on River, which did some real damage, but maybe if he tagged one or two more, potential to kill him. He probably would have blocked it anyway, to be honest though. And we'll see River again back down towards his bottom side, playing around Sniper, but APA intelligently had his E in that brush. They're kind of just scouting it out as his first strike does proc. And Quid now up on that top side, potentially uh, could deal with this Udyr a little bit better. He's gone for Blade of the Rune King into that Iceborne Gauntlet. So kind of a hybrid build. If Sniper reveals himself though, he's gonna die. He just doesn't know yet. APA getting bursted down pretty heavily though. Sniper wanted to make it happen. He's oh. barely gonna miss out. And deadly flourish over the wall. Puts a flower on his grave. APA survives with 100 HP. Yeah, that's a frustrating one for Sniper. He uses the flash as well. So spending that flash on Riven's so big. It is very difficult to team fight without it. Just doesn't quite have enough damage to get the kill. And the TL members were around, so they jump in. And they are able to save him. Another turret gonna go the way here of TL. As they will open up a very slight gold advantage. I've basically pulled it back to parity. The 100 Thieves pushing in mid lane here, trying to knock this one down. Ooh, the arrow flying in. River very importantly buffering through the stun to get out of the turret range. Could have been in some serious trouble otherwise. As Impact gets bursted, River brings him up and Meech knocks him down. Finally, they have enough ammo to bring down the tank. 100 Thieves with that kill on Impact immediately secure the tier 1 turret right after. Yeah, exactly. They're finally able to burst him down. Impact a little bit disrespectful as he was stepping forward into three. 1v3 pushed him off the turret, then kind of wanted more. He was looking for some more damage down onto River after that Ash Arrow did connect, but steps forward, gets tagged by the ulti from Seraphine. We can see the Mikhail's rush came in from Ayla, so does have that Mikhail's online. Both the support items are fully upgraded. The Celestial Bastion, I want to say, for me, so that is kind of that little damage reduction one. Yeah. But if you're jiving onto him, it is for range, I believe, 25% damage reduction until it does get popped. For melee, it's 35, then it has a little kind of AoE shockwave after it. Um, so it does make diving on the Seraphine a lot harder, and that in conjunction with the Seraph shield, it's multiple shields there, so this is a tough champion to burst down. Meech Ooh, trying nice to get away steps. here. Not oh, good. okay. Oh, these guys, okay. Duke boots. He's just walking back and forth like these guys are AIs. Just dodging <laughs> them easily. Oh, man. Impressively <laughs> done. Meanwhile, Seraphine got some schmooze. Yeah. Sniper in the bottom lane picking up a uh -oh. tier one for his team here. He wants to try to get away from impact. 
Yawn and Core JJ making their way over. The arrow is available. Yawn also with Deadly Flourish. You gotta think the arrow just barely missed it, but the Deadly Flourish locks him down. Sniper's still trying to get away from this one. Riven has a lot of movement, but that's Udir and Ash. I don't think it's gonna work. Sniper falls again. Yeah, the AoE slows there. So brutal to get away from Babe. Yay, caught checking the Baron. Is in trouble. He's gonna die here, surely. He tries to get away, tries to outplay it, but man, it's four on though. one. TL it's want this fight, maybe. Low. TL still coming around. I'm thinking about diving in, but surely he has to remember what happened back in that mid lane play. Crescent Sweep can't save you if you're too far away from everybody yeah. else, and they're all right on top of your location. So, looks like we're not going to get any more fight for now. Still, Isaac, this game has been no bigger than a 1,000 gold lead for yeah. the entire time. Yeah, we've been basically dead even. It is the one yeah, dragon advantage here for TL, but these two teams incredibly evenly matched. Uh, and it's it's also kind of interesting, you know, thinking about scaling because, of course, it's very difficult for them to deal with the Udir, but on the other side, Seraphine scaling is absolutely absurd, right? And yes, it will take you some time to actually punch through impact, but it doesn't matter if the rest of your team all dies around you, right? If you have that karma that Seraphine enabling these melee champions, but TL looking for a pick here. Under Thieves did not actually walk into the brush. River will be able to back it up. But the whole team needs to be together. Seraphine right. moving down. They need to be playing as a death ball. This is not a comp that wants to function attacking from multiple sides. You want to be having everyone getting shielded up, everyone getting buffed. Let's see. Sniper's on the back side of the Drake pit. River is back into the pit now, going after the Drake itself. Remember, it's two to one Drake count in favor of TL. 100 Thieves still controlling the pit. Sniper waiting for his moment. Last cones forward. Core JJ steps out of the way in time. Meanwhile, Quid playing the other flank for 100 Thieves. He goes into the hex gate. River wants Yawn, but has he gone in too far? Immediately stunned up. Won't die here just yet. Yawn barely getting away. Shot down back over to APA. The Fate Seal isn't going to do anything. Quid's in the middle of everybody. 100 Thieves still controlling the river, but the Drake isn't low enough. Impact disengaging now. Another bomb bounces out. 100 Thieves have lost a man, but the man is their jungler. Makes it very hard to try to do anything else around this objective. Team Liquid out fight him, and the Drake is their prize. It's Soul Point TL. And nicely done there by TL. It seemed like 100 Thieves really disjointed on that engage. River was ulting in as Quid was actually taking the Hexgate, right? So, you know, he's taking the Hexgate in across. We can see Sniper on the side here has no flash, so he can't really fully commit to it. And this, this timing is just not it, right? Maybe there was some miscommunication. Quid thought the river was going to delay the engage. Yeah. If Quid was there to ulti in immediately after, look at the health on Yon and Kor. If Yon and Kor instantly die at the start of that fight, this becomes a very different fight. But the disengage there is good from TL. They have impact just kind of blocking up that choke point, creating space for those carries and buying time for them to get their work done. The biggest thing there for me is the fact that now 100 Thieves is going to feel so much pressure on all of these subsequent Drakes. It's Hex Soul, man. A lot of things have changed. Hex Soul is still very, 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 very powerful. Yeah. Right? Especially with double marksmen. And it's, you have a Ziggs as well. They have lots of ways to apply it. It's a lot. So 100 Thieves, the pressure is going to be on here. It's four minutes until the next one of those spawns. Baron is on the rift already. That's why you can see everybody just thinking about this topside river for now. Speaking of River, doing a really good job using these short vault breakers to dodge away from CC or buffer through it, even if he's going to be hit. But now, Mega Inferno Bomb over the top, and Impact gets him. 100 Thieves trying to disengage as Umpty and Impact lead the charge. Core and APA coming around behind as Yon fires off the fourth shot. Quinn wants to try to dash out, but Umpty's still on top of him. Impact in the middle of three, and Sniper. Sniper flashes in. Only to find a bullet to the face. Team Liquid, two for nothing. Yeah, Sniper tries to go big in the back line, flashing forward, gets burst down as TL will turn on the Baron here. No Sniper, no River. Not much of a chance, I think, to contest this, but Ayla. Oh, Ayla, he's going to want that one back. APA sniping him down after the Deadly Flourish set it up. 100 Thieves know there's no way they can try to go in and contest this one any further, and things are quickly exploding in Team Liquid's favor. Yeah, 100 Thieves just haven't been perfect on those engages. And if you're not perfect on the engage, it is really, really tough with this triple melee team. You know, they want to have all these divers getting the back line at the same time, but they haven't really been able to do it. They haven't had Quid, River, and Sniper all in the back line at the same time, bursting down these squishy members. So it has been very, very difficult because if you don't get those early kills, they just don't really have a lot of DPS to actually deal with the front line. Impact's just kind of going crazy, walking around, stunning everyone up. His whole job is just AoE slow, peel, stun, really just disrupt them.
Impact is also on three fully completed items too. I mean, his, he's buying some low price point, yeah. but still very powerful items. The Frozen Heart purchased for both him and Umpty Zinjao means that that debuff is going to be on pretty much everyone on the enemy team at all yep. times, depending on, unless they're just super far away. And also, Kor and Yon, you're talking about these guys not getting dived, not a single death on either one mm -hmm. so far. That's the perfect example of how things have not gone to plan for 100 Thieves. Exactly, and, and you look at the bot lane, Kor has heal cut. Uh, we have the Serpent Tank that you touched on earlier, obviously, for Yon, so they're kind of itemizing to try to deal with this. APA has mostly been the target, but he went Zonia's, and the Zonia's has been keeping him safe over these last, last while, right? It's been making it very difficult for them to find these dives in onto him. And Umpty and Impact just kind of disrupting everything. Here's TP coming through. It is going to be Sniper coming in. River's diving. They're sending it. Yon's the target here. And immediately they find him. The Fate Seal gets the shutdown. That's the Jin already out of the picture. But can they get any more? The bomb goes up into the air. 100 Thieves takes some damage. But APA is down. One, two, three. Already killed. As Team Liquid after retreat. 100 Thieves went for the full send. And send they did. Sniper's going to send Core JJ right back to the fountain. And only Impact lives to tell the tale. Yeah, that is a huge play. And you can see on the top lane, look at them. They TP'd over to top lane. They're pushing. They want to try to get the inhibitor. Impact's trying to TP out. Is he going to be in time? He's oh, not! The ace! The ace for 100 Wait, how much can they get? It's a 15 second death timer on Yawn and Umpty. 100 Thieves. Just in here. Break into the base here. Yeah, they should grab the inhib, but Yon's gonna be up in time yep. to prevent a loss of game here. But what a massive, massive comeback play there from 100 Thieves. And you know what's even almost bigger is the fact that Impact dives that late and spends his TP, so he can't contest the dragon. So now I don't think that they're actually gonna be in time to stop this this next dragon here from 100 Thieves. We'll see though, because there are hex gates. So if Impact runs straight out to the hex gate, maybe he can get there in time. But I feel like if you start this right on spawn from 100 Thieves, as you should it's going to be really tough for Teal to do anything about it. So we can watch this one more time. Again, it's all about the engage. This time, a little bit better on the coordination here. We can see Quid going in. Sniper is TP'd in behind all three melees in the back line, bursting someone down. That's exactly what you want to have. And then Meech and Ayla kiting back, buying time, waiting till they can reconnect with that front line from the squad. And then the chase is on. The shield will never end. The speed ups will never end when you're playing this style of composition. So there is nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide, but we got to go back to live. As Hunter Thieves did, as I said, they're starting this off on spawn, knowing Impact wouldn't be able to get there in time. So great yeah. stuff from them. They stopped the soul again. Second dragon going their way. APA just goes top lane, looking to push and take some more turrets. As TL trying to set up shop in the Hunter Thieves right side jungle. 100 Thieves still have about a 2,000 gold lead. It'll shrink back down closer to 1,000 after this tier two turret dies up there. 31 minutes into the game. It's been a back and forth as 100 Thieves they do not want to allow Team Liquid to control any more of the Rift than they already do. Remember, we're at the point of the game now where these buffs, the red buffs and blue buffs, are now team-wide as well. So stealing those away can mean much, much more as 100 Thieves continue just running it down mid lane, trying to get these waves shoved back out, make sure they control their own half of the map. Impact is the target, but he's so tanky, you can't fully commit yeah. onto him, so they don't want to send too much. Instead, their death vault up is five, exactly as we've been saying, how they want to play, and they're just walking it straight down mid. Exactly, that top wave will be pushing in, but it is so far away because APA was able to really shove that top lane deep, which is very big for TL, because it means that there's not that second lane of pressure for quite a while. And that's why River is just going down towards bot side, pushing this out with Sniper, trying to get some threat on these tier twos down on that bottom side. So that when they push in mid, when they push in top with the supers, uh, they can hopefully pick up a little bit more gold. And it is now a 2.3K gold advantage here, 400 Thieves. Plus, these Axe Tech Dragons individually, you know, pretty nice. Uh, yep. been working towards that soul. And hey, they're one off soul point. If they can grab that, it would be that seventh dragon that would decide it all. The dragons are one apart. The turrets are also six to seven. Kills are pretty close. This first game has been really a match between these two teams that honestly have quite an interesting history together. Remember, it was Team Liquid and 100 Thieves. The first time that 100 Thieves ever made an LCS Finals, they were against Team Liquid. Got absolutely smashed 3-0 in what was at that point <laughs> the fastest finals in yeah. LCS history. Yeah. And then the next time they meet in Finals, 100 Thieves come back and takes the record from TL, doing the same to them. I The history between these 
these two teams is just always so much fun, and this game's delivering again. It's been one of the ones that really is kind of those rivalries that you've been looking at is building up and up and up over these last couple of years. Uh, really interesting kind of just set of items here from Quid. He's got a little bit of uh, the garage sale going on. He's got all kinds of different stuff. He's got a cyclo sword <laughs> in a there. He's got sale. a all that's completed. He's got, he's got ice porn. Uh, so it really is kind of a, a pretty wide assortment of items here. Uh, it's pretty interesting. A little bit of lethality, a little bit on hit, a little bit of tank action going on. Well, it's doing something right, man. He's got seven out of 11 kill participation and is now the only player in the game that has not died yet. So. And it's tough to burst him down when they go this style of build, right? You right. can't just 100 to 0 him instantly. It's really good in long extended fights if you can get it. It's obviously a lot worse than like those IE style builds and just 100 to 0 someone. Right. Um, but if he feels that, hey, if I go in, I would just get stunned up and burst down, then obviously, you know, this does make sense. Gives him some armor, gives him some MR, and it gives him pretty high sustained DPS if he can be connecting. And look at the vision from 100 Thieves all in this area, completely Perfect. controlling that vision. But the Hawkshot comes in. Core obviously scouting out that Baron, and the Baron will go down very slowly because Quid is not even hitting it. Sniper is not even there, so it's just three men in that pit. But it is a very healthy Baron because you're constantly just shielding up River. Yeah. And TL at some point will be forced to go, and Sniper here hanging on the side. Team Liquid wants in already. River down to half HP. Umpty tries to go in for him, but the Crescent Sweeper's gonna wear off soon. Seraphine Umpty over the top, baby, and Quid goes on a rampage. Hundred teams already found two, and River wants another. Yawn flashes back over the wall to escape, and Sniper's on to APA, the zigs ain't gonna last long, and be 100 it. Thieves just won the game! 100 Thieves gonna TP into top lane, Impact TP back to try to clear the wave, but I don't think he's gonna be able to do it, it's 1v5 for Impact. The Udyr will not stand against this one, it was a battle for 35 minutes, but 100 Thieves outplay him in the end, the team fight ace for nothing they gotta beat the inhibitor back <laughs> out again but it's okay it's not gonna dissuade only core jj is back alive as the nexus turrets fall and in the first game of lcs 2024 100 thieves reign supreme sniper gets his first lcs win and he does it on the ribbon 100 thieves coming out here one of the teams that really had not been considered amongst the top at the table, right? You know, most people are talking about teams like C9, teams like TL, teams like FlyQuest, yeah. up at the top, teams that could really be challenging up there. And 100 Thieves was a footnote in those conversations. It's one of the teams that was considered to be down at the bottom, but coming in here, really having a great game to kick off their LCS split here in spring 2024. Cool comp, great play. River and Quid looking really strong as a duo. Those guys got a lot done. Sniper being able to bring out the Riven was really cool. Meech and Ayla performing really well, showcasing yeah. good mastery of the meta right now. This double enchanter bot lane. Again, from when I looked at the stats, that was the first Seraphine that we've seen globally in pro. It looks strong. And honestly, everything for me goes back to that bot lane play with the TP collapse. Remember that at this point, it was TL who had Baron, who had Soul Point, who were 3,000 gold ahead. And 100 Thieves said, we gotta go now or there ain't no going. Yeah. And that was the turning point of the game. But with game one wrapped up, a reminder to all y'all out there, Fantasy LCS is happening on Sleeper. It's not too late to stop, sign up and start a league with your friends. Then crush their dreams with your own LCS super team. Maybe you wanna pick up Sniper. I might think about it myself. You can head on over to sleeper.com or sleeper.app to give it a try. But while 2024 marks the start of a new era for the LCS, it is the end of another. After playing since 2011, Doublelift has retired from competitive League of Legends. Let's take a look at what he means to some of our current pros. Doublelift retiring is definitely big news. My fondest memory of Doublelift was playing against each other in my first match versus him. He was playing as he had after me as a support and I was playing Draven with a special. And then I remember just like really nervous playing against him and ended up winning that game. For me, it's like we were the 80 carries that were playing in LCS for a long time. And basically my rival when I first came onto the scene. Before I even started playing League, this guy was a big deal. And he was a bigger deal than me, even when, you know, I went through all my experiences. So, like, putting that into perspective for me is like, holy shit, you know. He was pretty based, you know. Back in the day, I was a big CLG fan when I was growing up, mainly because of him. It was really nice to be able to compete against him when 
I first joined the league. That was when he won back to back to back to back. I highly respect him about having a really strong mindset. Maybe he knows how to win. Before I was taking league seriously at all, or before I even played ADC, I remember seeing his play in 2016 against C9. He's like cutting the C9 players, dashing back over Talia Dabri or something, and then going forward again and killing everyone in that playoff series. I mean, that's like a play that I think everyone will remember. Whenever I uh, remind myself about this moment, I can like see everything that happened. Ultimately, that one clip snowballed into me going pro. That's when I started playing ADC. I spammed Lucian for like 40 games straight. It's kind of sad for me because he was a player I looked up to a lot growing up. He did give me a lot of respect and credit for being a grinder, and that sort of helped push my career into the right direction as well. When I was a kid, I watched a lot of double lift. I think he was obviously like the NA GOAT, so it was really easy to look up to him. It's sad to see him retire because I won't get a chance to play against him, but it was nice to watch him when he did. I mean, eight trophies, three different teams, you know, four in a row, I think those are going to be honestly hard to do again. He will definitely go down as one of the greatest players to ever play in NA. It's a triple for Doublelift. He's like, I can't believe they've done it. Doublelift has played with or against almost 78% of all LCS players in history. He's been a part of six different teams, but today he's on the caster team. The GOAT of North America joins us for the LCS Finals rematch between Energy and C9 right here. Coming up next, don't go anywhere. You ready? No, I think so. Yeah, you know, just remember, stay in your lane, keep your vision up at all times. You know, time is gonna be everything here. So you don't wanna go too fast, but you also don't wanna be going hey. I got this. Yeah, I think you do. And Mark, thanks. Whoa, hey, no, 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 whoa, no. You're not taking my car. My Kia EV9? No way. No touching. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back. I'm here with Sniper. First game on LCS stage. First win. How's it going? It feels awesome, to be honest. I to... Oh, oh my bad. I'm like completely <laughs> clueless uh, on how to do interviews, but uh, yeah, it feels great. I also had to bust out the ribbon because my older brother, Viper, he's actually here yeah. like, watching my games. So uh, yeah, I mean, it feels awesome. First ever LCS win and more to come. Yeah, uh, we talked to Viper a little while, actually, uh, earlier, uh, where he was cheering you on. I know I talked to you previously uh, during Asset Day, and I was like, what do you think top lane's going to be? And you were like, well, I want it to be more isolated. I want it to be a 1v1. Uh, so how do you feel now after, again, having busted out the ribbon in this game? Um, how would you evaluate your performance? And do you think top lane is going to be more isolated in that way? Definitely on bruisers, I think. But with champions like Udyr and just like tanks in general, I feel like they already have pretty like good lane laning phases and stuff. So um, their side laning is already like kind of okay. All they mm -hmm. really need to do is kind of just like have a sol solid lane phase, not go down in CS too much, and just like play the mid to late game like pretty well by just like pushing the wave in and then like shifting to your team. So you can just like front line for them the entire time. But with bruisers, it's like the opposite. You want to just like keep pushing in the side laner that you're playing against, just because of the new items 
because they're like really broken and then you can make the decision to either keep going or to like just look for flanks and stuff which is what I was like doing this entire game. I was nice. just always calling. All right, so just uh, the final question is, obviously you have a ton of fans here, you have your family here. Anything you want to say to all these people, who, some of whom have been waiting for your debut since you were 14? I just appreci appreciate everyone just being like really patient um, with like my development and stuff, because last year wasn't like the best year for me. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm just like super glad to be here. I'm just like trying to live in the moment, just even when it comes down to like these stage matches and stuff, uh, I just like tried just remaining calm the entire time. And yeah, I mean, just like shout out to my older brother, Amran as well. He's like just been <laughs> just like here with me from the beginning to the end. Well, this isn't even the end, but <laughs> uh, I guess like, yeah, he's just always been here with me and yeah. my family and just everyone on 100 Thieves. It's not the end, it's just the beginning. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. I'll send you back to your team. Congratulations. That's Thank it. You. Bye, guys.